Hey folks. So two things. One, as it turns out, when you have an active thought about to conceptualize, you can't save. I don't think I ever ran into that in my first playthrough. Secondly, we had a thought bubble that disappeared, and I have not yet been able to get it back. We'll see if it, it shows back up through gameplay, and I'm going to be kind of cranky if it doesn't. Honestly. Thought complete. Volumetric shit compressor. Psh. Bizarre scientific news from Hrabashol West today, where a police officer's shit has been observed at a pressure of about 495 gigadecimals. These metallic hydrogen levels of shit togetherness were thought to exist only at the center of collapsing stars, not law officials. It remains to be seen how long the shit singularity lasts. All endurance white checks unlocked. Learning cap for endurance, raised to four. Thought complete. Hobo cop. <clears throat> Te technically, you wouldn't be a cop anymore, but a hobo. That would mean game over for the cop chapter of your adventures. But who knows where the hobo part takes you? To the bar? The old La Samoa? To the pier or the sewers? To Lurayam? Where for 300 years they interred the dead? You could plunder royalist, royalist crypts for long forgotten triple malt bourbon. Then fight the Armacan beast that lurks the bottommost sepulchers. The secrets of the city are all yours. At last. Reveals extra special collector's edition Tare bottles on the map. More money from selling Tare. Learning cap for shivers raised to six. Our learning cap was already kind of high, though. All right. We have some things in our thought cabinet. We have some slots that are not yet unlocked. It costs a point to dump something out of your thought cabinet. The 15th Indo Tribe. Wild Pines. Fell, Coupri, Tricentennial, Villiers, La Salle. Names of Hrevacholi and Indo tribes spring into your head, set loose at the mention of wild pines. Royal monopolies, octopuses and swordfish, most of them gone now. YBP, Expander, Saint-Baptiste, Brightest Star, LUM, Resplendant, East Insulendic, Welter, and Elkaset. But isn't one missing? Wait, no, there were only 14. Then why do you feel like there was a 15th Indo tribe? We have a skill point. A plastic bag. Uh, I want to know what button that was. See? Yes. Okay. Ah! No, oh, our bubble is back. We're doing that first. Hear that? Magnesium. That's what you're lacking. The lack of magnesium has you slouched. The magnesium blood levels in your blood. <clears throat> Hang on. <clears throat> Sire, the magnesium levels in your blood are dangerously low. You might want to fix that then. It's about the low magnesium levels and not the high alcohol levels. Fucking knew it wasn't the alcohol or the mm, ah, other things. Yeah, the other things. Long live the other things. Made you strong as an ox, they have. So there's a lack of magnesium in me? Yes, and it's critical. Look at yourself. You're practically devolving into a fish due to the lack of magnesium in your bloodstream. I'm skimming and fixing most of the typos as I go. Uh, there are still some in the game text, but for the most part, if I catch it, I'm going to fix it and not mention it. If it catches me and I trip, I'm still going to try not to mention it, but you'll definitely hear me uh, lock up and stutter for a second. So I need to mag it sideways. Mag it sideways? What are you talking about? You need to mag it up. You've probably had two heart attacks and a minor stroke already. And the only prescription? 
is insane amounts of cowbell. You're saying I need to become a magnesium-based life form? Yes. If you want to live, you need to evolve. You need to ascend the carbon barrier. Go to the apothecary and then buy an insane amount of magnesium. It will reverse the damage to your circulatory system. Just remember, it's not the alcohol. Buy more of that too. Alcohol is not the problem. And it's certainly not the dextroamphetamine. Now we're smoking for 40 years. It's the lack of magnesium and excess of coffee. Yeah, you should stop drinking coffee. It wreaks havoc on your gastrointestinal system. But, but coffee. <sighs> Kim, what do you think about magnesium and coffee? All right, we're still not getting anywhere on that. <sighs> Joyce? You're back. Good. What can I help you with? Grace, what can you tell me about this lynching? Quite a few things, I'm afraid. She falls silent for a moment, contemplating something. The information I'm to share with you includes sensitive trade secrets. For the sake of my employer, I have to ask for your names and badge numbers. Of course, ma'am. We should have introduced ourselves. The lieutenant hands her a piece of blue plastic. I'm Lieutenant Kitsuragi, from Precinct 57. And this is my colleague from Precinct 41. He waits for you to show your badge. Kim, you... We already knew this. And you just outed me. Rude. Then again, it's our fault for implying that we had it. Even in the open context of, no, we don't. I don't seem to have my badge, actually. How curious. She returns the lieutenant's badge and turns to you. Why is that, Detective? Wow, I turned into Rachel Ghoul for a second there. Why is that, Detective? All right, that's a little too animated. A <clears throat> little too animated series. Uh, remember when my partner told you I had recently suffered from an unusual medical episode? Uh, my, my lost badge is related to that. I see. She looks increasingly worried. So, are you saying you lost your badge during the course of this episode? Ah. Uh, yes. I can't hear you, darling. Speak up, please. I was really hoping to get away with just that. I could have eaten it for all I know. I don't... I don't remember anything. This world, this city, nothing. We don't like this answer. We don't like either of these answers. Uh, they absolutely go against the demeanor, the, the attempt of the facade of re understanding reality that we're trying to put up for this investigation. And it's awful that the game is not giving us a dialogue option to play that. I could have eaten it for all I know. Oh, dear. She sighs with confusion, sadness even. Some kind of encephalopathic amnesia? I don't even know how to respond. I do believe you, naive as that may sound. I simply can't imagine what you gain by faking such a condition. As said, ma'am, the lieutenant interjects, his technique may be very unconventional, but he is an officer of the RCM. Of course, I sympathize, but I'm afraid I simply can't share anything more until I've seen that badge. Hang on, she's a professional negotiator. She should be open to some sort of mutually beneficial arrangement. She has sympathy for our amnesia. Ooh, we came out of that okay. Uh, 
It's a red check, but I think I'm wearing something that lowers my suggestion. What kind of arrangement would it be? I mean favors for favors, a mm, dirty alliance of some sort. Then I'll find it somehow. Let's talk about something else until I do. Of course. She grabs the mainstay and leads toward you. But before we do, officers, let me be perfectly clear. The situation is extremely volatile. The sooner we can speak about this lynching business, the better for all of us. Thank you. Come again. All right. Uh... Oh, no, I have the suggestion minus shirt already off. Because it is that. But I knew it existed. All right. Good. What can I help you with? What can I help you with? Okay. Hey, about my missing badge again. How do I negotiate my way out of this? Dirty pool, old man. I like it. Easy. Just... Offer her a favor, like I said. Nice and dirty. Surely there's some other way to demonstrate our law enforcement credentials. I will be frank with you. She puts down her thermal cup. She puts down... Sorry, I'm just being fussy at the game for not having enough character animations. I love the writing, but I'm still going to tease it. That's what I do. It's who I am. If I'm going to break protocol, I need to be able to justify it to my superiors. They're going to want to see something very tangible. You're in, but expect her to drive a hard bargain. Like what? Reports from inside Terminal B suggest it's a hub for the local drug trade. This is an open secret in Martinet. The Union controls the terminal, so it goes to reason... They're profiting from this trade. The company has tried looking into the matter before, but to no avail. Perhaps someone with your authority and resources might turn over the right stones. Our authority? Our authority is too, madam. Or... She picks the cup back up. You can recover your badge, though, if I may be blunt... It sounds like that may be a lost cause. Detective, the lieutenant closes the notebook. A word in private before we continue. Uh, Joyce, hang on a moment. That means Kim wants to talk. He has something important. How did you hope it would go? Honestly, I was expecting you to use your unorthodox technique to keep her off balance and, you know, not volunteer us to be our henchmen. Really? I thought it was going so well. <sighs> this woman is running circles around us. She might have known about your misplaced badge all along, or she's simply an adept improviser. Either way, we played straight into her hands. What do you propose, that we don't investigate the drug trafficking? No. If there is reasonable suspicion, we must investigate. Otherwise, she could claim we're siding with the Union. Or that we're on their take. We'd never hear the end of it. <sighs> what I propose is we ask her, then we investigate. Briefly. He adjusts his glasses. But do not share the outcome of this investigation with her. We tell her it's done, and demand for her information on the lynching. Hmm. I like this angle. Or we could just, you know, find my badge. Oh. He nods slowly. That will be fantastic. But do we have the time? The world is large, and your badge is 8 by 6 centimeters. You could request a new one from your station... But that would literally take months. Mm, let's get back to it. All right, Grace. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? Joyce, you seem smart. I need someone to give me a lowdown on this 
reality we're in. This reality. She pulls her hood closer around her neck. It's related to that medical episode. I have trouble remembering even the most basic terms of reality. Ah, uh, yes, the episode sounds like an acute case of encephalopathy. Now that I think of it, she puts down the thermal cup and looks at you. Don't be phased, madam. He functions perfectly well. He only needs a lowdown on all of reality. We may be here a while, then. She takes a long sip of tea. Ask away, officer. I'll help however I can. All right. We're in. I know these all look good, but... Begin with the first, okay? That's not happening. That's not happening. Where are we? We're in Martinet, baby. Baby. A casual term of endearment, popular along the 50-plus crowd. It's a disco holdover. Pay it no mind. I'm a disco holdover myself, Boomer. Ha! <laughs> Aren't we all? And, uh, what is Martinet? Martinet is a district of Revachon. She looks around, her green raincoat flapping in the wind. A very small industrial district tucked away near the industrial harbor, north of the 881 and Jammer. You'd be excused for not knowing about it. Unimportant, they say. Forgotten, even. Shelled to smithereens during the revolution. She shrugs. It has its charms, just not this time of year. Tell me... I want to know what that leads to. I don't know if we're going to get that option again. But I, I don't know if either one of these sets of questions is going to lock off the other. But we need, as a detective, I think we need the former more than the latter. Tell me more about Martinet. Oh, I'm, I'm not a good ambassador. I've only been here once before as a teenager. Not a lot has changed. She closes her eyes. There are ruins, a terminal, fishing boats, reeds, boys with boxy shoulders. She opens them. This place used to be a province, a worker's resort before the city swallowed it, and the artillery did its work. The reeds are the real star of the show now. The further down the coast, the wilder it gets. Uh, you mentioned a sea. What sea is that? It's not really a sea. It's the Bay of Revachol, and the bay feeds into the ocean. Are we near the ocean? Yes. We are on an island in an ocean. The world's largest body of water, the Insulindic. What's the name of this island? Caillou. She looks to the waters. Imagine a pebble. A smoothed over pebble amidst a great blue sea. Misshapen, cracked. The, cracked are the, the cracks are the river Esperance. We are in the delta of this river on the sixth branch, the Martinet Distributary. It is clear that this pebble is of enormous value to her. Tell me another, perhaps even more, fundamental aspect of this reality. I would be happy to. What is a preposterously expensive education, if not for sharing? Yeah, we, uh, we hit the gold mine on this one, folks. Any of this boosting us? Ch uh, our checks? All right. What times are these? These are... Unimportant times, detective. She puts her finger to her lips and then points at you. You and I were born after the dust had settled. A thousandth of a second too late. Too late for what? For the big time. Her eyes light up. There's a flash of teeth. The smile of a predator. No doubt what she's got in mind. You've got a predatory streak. All men are predators, dear. Nothing much to be done about that. It's all a matter of where you get to file your teeth. What's the big time? The revolution. <laughs> what is this revolution I keep hearing about? It's quite easy. Every hundred years or so, our species gets together to decide what's next. 
Who gets shot in the head and who gets the mineral rights? It's a real kerfluffle. Who got shot in the head? Those would be the communists. Generally speaking, 40 million people or so got shot in the head during the World Revolution. But the communists, they all got shot in the head. Oh, and the anarchists too. They shot them well. So well, one forgets they even existed. Did the communards and the anarchists shoot back? Did they ever? Before they got shot themselves, they shot two million people. Truly a kerfluffle. Well, I mean, saying that's a tragedy implies we care more about one side than the other, and this is distant enough that we kind of don't. Even though we're learning about it for the first time, we're still very detached. And sounds like they should have shot more people in the head then means sounds like they should have won. And that's not what our uh, dollar cop here really wanted to happen. So, truly a kerfluffle, a flusterkuck, if you will. It was a kerfluffle, all right. The lieutenant mumbles from behind his notes. Yes, the insulindian deluge, they called it. I had a deluge, too, in my head. Point to your little head. Yes, an acute thiamine deficiency can be exacerbated by alcoholism. She blinks her green eyes. Exacerbated means made worse. Oh, uh, by the way, detective, I figured out a great new way to be condescending to people. Oh, really? What's that, Joyce? Oh, that's, uh, that's simply when you explain a word they already know and talk down to them. Thanks, Joyce. Did anyone else get shot in the head on the opposing side? Oh, lots of people. Even the king got shot in the head or thrown beneath a horse or drowned. Accounts differ. It was unceremonious and unfortuitous. She shakes her head. Just as well, he wasn't actually the king, just the king's nephew. The real king abdicated and lived out a long and productive life as a venture capitalist in Grad. Cowardly king. I prefer the term risk-averse. King Guillaume was nobody's fool. He could smell a PR disaster brewing. So he got out alive and his nephew Frisell got shot in his place. Him and tens of thousands of his wonderfully fascist kingsmen. It was a wild time. Who got the mineral rights? The liberals got the mineral rights. She looks up to the sky, then inland at the crumbling city. And by mineral rights, I mean everything. And by liberals, you mean... Liberals are usually middle-class people, detective, or the remaining gentry. The beneficiaries of the pre-revolutionary arrangement. Some were rich enough to stay with the constitution, with monarchy. Big mistake. Others bet on the revolution. They were called the ultras, or ultra-liberals. They fared well. How did the liberals win it all? They didn't win so much as survive. We were the last ones standing when the war ended. Everyone else got shot in the head, remember? We. She's one of them, of course. If everyone got shot, who was there to surrender to? To foreign intervention, the coalition. Those people really took the mineral rights. Wait, you, you just said the liberals took everything. The liberals took everything that wasn't nailed to the ground. The coalition took the ground. She stomps her rubber-booted foot. The ocean, the laws, and the people. Who are the coalition? The coalition of nations. God, Mesk, Vesper, Messina, Orange, and Sulaclef. The armed center of the world. They landed here and ended the revolution. It was the moralist thing to do. Moralist. The Morris believe in keeping everything exactly the way it is. They believe in mineral rights and not shooting people in the head. At least not in the same manner and volume as the others do. They are the long-standing provincial rulers of Revacholna, the coalition government. The rulers of Revachol and also Zawarudo. These guys are strong. 
This is their zone of control. They embolden the RCM with crumbs of the same law they took. Technically speaking, you're a moralist. <laughs> as much as I like the third option for hilarity's sake, I don't think I am moralist, ma'am. Mm, of course, she sizes you up. Not easy to be moderate about head shooting in your line of work. Rudy tooty point and shooty. I, wait, I have to say that out loud? Oh, jeez. Rudy tooty pointy shooty. That's the way of history. She nods. When was this kerfluffle? The turn of the century revolution? She smiles mischievously. Don't answer it. It's a trick question. The, the revolution began in Otu on the Eol Asola of Grad, though by the end nearly the whole world had gotten involved. Who started it? It wasn't a who, but a what. A pandemic of Zareth, a particularly vi virulent prion disease, which the authorities in Grad proved unable to contain. Then Mazov came along and over through the gov did i mention i'm playing this in 2020 <clears throat> what did this zareth do it made people overthrow their governments no way indeed zareth is a highly infectious microorganism that destroyed brain tissue the actual causes of the revolution were material the pandemic only provided the spark. And where did it spread from there? From Hravashol and Grab? Not far. The world managed to cauterize itself. Mazov's government was overthrown in 08, and the coalition crushed the Revashol commune two years later. It was the end. What came next? Why, you and I, officer. She spreads her arms. Arm, Ugh, she spreads her arms, raincoat flapping in the wind. I'm the king of the world. Our lives in the zone of control. What is the zone of control? A city-state divided into free market zones under the everlasting... I'm not even sure. Inter... So it's like inter as in interim... And regnum as in regency? Interregnum of the Coalition of Nations, and you, of course, the Citizens' Militia. The Zone of Control is the third incarnation of Hrevesho, after the failure of the Suzerain and the Commune. What happened in the rest of the world? Modernity. They developed the marvels of interisolary communication, telematic milieu, Radiation, colored plastics. Meanwhile, in Hravashol West, the aftermath continues for the fifth decade. It's been like this for how long, exactly? Forty-three years. Hard to fathom, I know. What have we been doing all this time? The twenties saw a decade of urban war. West of the river leveled. Offshore platforms in flames. Still, it's regarded as an improvement on what came before. 08 to 19 was simply hell. And after that? The 30s? Things settled down in the 30s. Hravisholis transformed itself into the world's largest tax haven, with the international community's blessing. For the first time in a long time, it seemed like things were going somewhere. Were they? No. It was a market mirage, fueled by cocaine and quantitative easing. The 40s dispelled it like a cold splash. An isola-wide hangover, you might say, and here we are, she curtsies. Welcome to reality, baby. What would you have done differently? <sighs> Good question. What would you have done differently? I don't know. 
What would you have done differently, Detective? As much as I want to reflect the question, I think we get another chance to do that. I don't... I would not have killed more. A medical solution is nice, but it might also be the middle of the road. <sighs> you know, maybe I would have made off of the mineral rights. <laughs> you and everyone else, but that's got nothing to do with preventing the revolution. Ah, well, what was, was, I guess. Que sera, sera. Joyce, what does that mean? I don't know. All right. I ask you, who are you in all this? And I ask you, pastless detective of the Citizens Militia, what insight has acute encelopathy given to you? Here's some wisdom, lady. Say the death thing! Yeah, I, I don't think that's us. Let's even say, sounds like Zarath drove these people mad. A cold creeps up your spine, reaching its tendrils up your neck, toward the back of your head. So, a quarter of humanity simply lost their minds? And how would you stop a prion, a complex folding protein, on life with the technology 50 years ago? Hmm. <laughs> okay, so, one, absolutely, but maybe not for this detective. Two, holy heck no! Four, uh, I don't want to resign myself. Three, I don't personally like it, but it's probably what this man would have said. You know what? We are kind of a, a more of a grunt than a thinker, aren't we? Yeah, the work ethic that does not turn your brain into sponge tissue. The wind stops, and for a moment there's silence. The charge dissipates into the dark water. All is quiet on the Martinet Inlet. A dog barks. A gunshot echoes off the walls of some distant building. A woman's voice. It's all yours. Mm, a poor remedy for prion disease, she says. That was the attitude of most of the more moderate Indo tribes, particularly those who supported the king. Oh, heck. Capri, resplendent, both gone now. Those that survived mended their ways. They're all ultras now. Hmm. <laughs> The lieutenant puts down his notes for a moment. Opinions expressed here do not reflect the official position of the RCM. All Twitter posts are my own. And what is your official position, lieutenant? My position, ma'am? My parents got ripped to shreds in the revolution. I would have gone the same way. I was saved by being two years old. That's my position, the abattoir. Understandable, she nods. I don't know what I would have done differently. Then you would have died, most likely. Not far from here. Maybe even right here, during the beachhead. Defending the coast the day the coalition took the city. The cold runs down your spine. She gestures towards the waters. No, no way. No. Mm -hmm. Just having to strike. Fi I'm having to figure out who this character is, and I guess I'm having odds where it would have fought with me. I don't know. We're going to say, mm, probably. The wind stops. There is silence again on the dark water of the Martinet Inlet. These things happen again. No. Almost certainly, the commune would have forced you. 
Such was the fate of the undecided. How do I get her to answer? Because I know you do. Let's try the medical again. Ah, with some hygiene, modest social care, and perhaps a little research program. There is peace in the heart. Good hygiene, really? A very moderate solution to an extreme problem. It's these sorts of half-measures that doomed the authorities in Grad. When they failed to step up, Mazov and his party stepped in. In this particular case, maybe a more robust state response might have been appropriate. And these things again. All right, that's enough about the times. I'm done playing with that. They are what they are. Who knows? An afterbloom may yet come. Anyway, enough sentimentality. Is there anything else you want to know? Not so fast. Who is she in all this? Ask her who she is. She owes you an answer. Have I gotten any... No. What's my time? Yeah, I got time for a few more. What is this? A bird? A sphenicid? A flightless bird of the polar regions? Am I really that awkward? Of course you're not, dear. I'm just terrible at guessing games. I meant, what is this place here? Aha! She spreads her arms almost as wide. This is the pier of Rue de saint Ghislain, 33A, where the tenants have been kind enough to rent me a slot. Or two. She looks around. What is Rue de saint Ghislain, 33A? A pre-revolutionary tenement. Old buildings, you see, are called tenements, and new buildings, bâtiments, after Le Bâtiment Nouveau. But 33A and 33B are not nouveau. They're old. She looks up at the crumbling facade. This one used to be eight to ten stories tall, a real high-rise by the standards of the last century, built to mirror the skyscrapers across the bay in the delta. This was before the war, of course. Who lived in them? Mostly the urban middle class, I believe. This was once primo real estate. Before the cannons lopped four or five stories off. Spitzblatt! From a dilapidated balcony, a young girl in old clothes gives Joyce the evil eye, a red paintbrush held to her throat. You could be wrong, but from here it appears as if she's running the brush across her throat. In a sawing motion. Mmm, wonderful. <laughs> what is that? Point to Cindy. The girl in the old lady rags? No, no, I meant something basic about reality. Ah, uh, yes. There's something very satisfying about discussing the fundamental facts of reality. No, no, tell me about the girl. Looks like a sullen and rebellious member of a teen infraculture. Infraculture? Yes, you and I become to the supraculture. We're common, the herd. The music on the radio, the food in the chain restaurant. Those are all too popular for the girl in the old lady rags. She prefers a fantasy world, an infraculture, with its own dress code and vernacular. It is an illusion, I'm afraid. There is no refuge from the supraculture. I understand everything. Make it more complicated somehow. I can't. That's how simple it is. One may dye their hair green and wear their grandma's coat all they want. Capital has the ability to subsume all critiques into itself. Even those who would critique capital end up reinforcing it instead. Hmm. All right, what next? 
I want to know what you are. Hmm. She hums. She won't maneuver her way out of this one. Say nothing. I am the vilest of the vile, she says, with a sudden flash of teeth. A traitor, a devourer of nations and infants. I am an ultra. She raises the corner of her mouth, smirking, revealing one canine. It's sharp. I don't understand. What's so vile about that? And let's 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 back up first. Uh, wait, what's an ultra? An ultra liberal? It's a type of liberal from the revolution. It's uh, it's not the moderate kind. I don't understand. What's so vile about that? Haven't you heard? She nods pedagogically. I am a nether creature of the forbidden swamp, one of those who pushed the king under a shit wagon and betrayed the revolution. We surrendered the nation to financier pirates. No sane person identifies as ultra-liberal anymore, not in broad daylight. She looks into your eye. I can see we're not so different, you know. Tell me, now that I've uncoiled myself, do you find me frightening? In her green eyes, you see a mixture of truth and self-satire. Decades of guilt and pride. I do forgive you. I do hope so. She bows. I do hope we're able to remain collegial despite it all. Tell me, when you look in the mirror, do you not see a monster staring back at you? When the dust settles, the liberals were the only ones left to clean up the mess. By virtue of their survival, they were handed enormous power to shape the future. She turns her gaze to the Delta. This was all our last generation managed. Would you have done something differently? With due respect to our overlords, the eternal caretaker government that keeps Montenay a monument to the efficacy of its artillery, while a gentle wind sweeps the streets in the rebuilt east, light drizzle washing it clean, lights go up and motor carriages circulate the tracks. I would not have relinquished sovereignty to the coalition, not here in Martinet, and not in the Stella Marie or Delta beachheads either, if not for my own sake. She realizes her small, cold fists are clenched, she loosens them. <sighs> then, for my daughters, we had an obligation to defend our sovereignty. We should have burned the whole Isola down rather than let them have it. You're a patriot? Yes, I suppose I am. But I wouldn't be a patriot anywhere but here. Seditious talk, madam. A lieutenant puts down his notes and gives her a look. You're a smart woman. Perhaps, her earrings chime as she nods, my intellectual vanity will be my undoing. You have daughters? Yes, whatever else I am, I'm also a mother and a wife. She closes her eyes and opens them again. Now, shall we return to reality? What is this acute encephalopathy? You pressed the wrong button, baby. One moment. Oh, here we go. Okay, that's Martinet. What's Hrevishol? Hrevishol? Hrevishol is what you call a city. What kind of city is Hrevishol? The great kind. What makes Hrevishol great? History detective. They built this city to resolve history. Our part in it, at least, our centuries. Gosh, I'm over time already. Too bad we'll keep going on anyway. Okay, who built this city? The nations of the Occident. Or migrant workers from Seminine and Ilmara, depending on your creed. When was Revishol built? In the DeLorean century. 
380 years ago. And why will it resolve history? They say it's where the terrible questions of our time will be answered. The tensions are the highest, the fault lines deepest. By that I mean the conflicts, ideological conflicts, the stuff of men. Why here? We are standing on a fertile, self-sufficient island able to sustain up to 200 million people in the middle of the Insulindic Ocean, the world's connective tissue. She smiles. It's where the money is. So we're in an unimportant part of an important place. I think it's fair to say so. Martinet is about... She points across the water where the skyscrapers rise. A collection of tall ghosts behind the water vapor, light reflecting off their glass windows. 22 kilometers from the center of the world, that soldering iron is the bank of the world building. The bottom floors are INSERCOM, Coalition Government, Insulindian Mission Command. Look to the sea. Silence. She lowers her hand. The water, the light. It's as if you're seeing it for the first time. There is no recognition. Only the immensity of the sea and the cold radiating from it. Where are we, Joyce? We are where we are. I have no truer answer to give, unfortunately. She watches you closely as you scan the horizon. This is one thought you need to complete. Where are you? Was there something else you wanted to know? I remember something about a lowdown. Uh, I'm gonna grab a couple more because reasons. What is Ravashul? Okay. I don't know any of this. Anything else? Do 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 what side of city? We built this city on rock and wheat. Look to the scene. I just love that sound effect of everything zeroing in for shivers. Whew. I hope you're wearing headphones when it plays. Say nothing. Observe the large body of water swelling. Cold. She observes your eyes, scanning the horizon, then breaks the silence, slowly. All right, fine. What is acute encephalism? It's a neurological disorder caused by a lack of vitamin B in the brain. Symptoms include retrograde amnesia. It's quite serious. You should get yourself checked out. Okay, but what causes it? Well, it's either bariatric surgery or long-term alcohol use. We've already been outed a couple times in this conversation. It's definitely the drinking. She nods, slowly. What this boils down to is... This reality thing is stupid! Blow this joint, grab a bottle, and drain that shit right down your throat! Uh... uh oh. Oh. Come on, Harry. This is, this is not the time. You're on a case, you're on a case, and someone you need on your side is watching you. And your partner is here. Do not embarrass yourself in front of your partner. No, wipe that urge from your mind. Get back to reality. She stares at you, head tilted to the side, 
with a slightly concerned look on her face. That's all for now. Glad to know I've been of assistance, the little that I do know. Anything else? Uh, no, nothing else. Okay, fine. Wow. You work hard. I do? Oh, yeah. You hustle. You're a provider. It's tough out there. But you keep it real and provide. What hard work do I do, exactly? Look at yourself! You're a human pedometer! You must have walked 200,000 steps down cracked asphalt, mosaic, sand, and linoleum just after you reemerged. That is the sign of a hustler who never gives up. The world is harsh, and people are evil. You didn't make it that way, and you won't let it break you. You ride. Uh, I, I ride a, a little. A little? You make money. You got gills, baby. Got those black papers with the faces of the innocences on them. You bring in the Franco Negros and the Solas. It ain't easy, but you do it. Day in and day out. You didn't make the rules, but you won't lose. You're a cop and a sprinter and a money printer. Uh, all right, I guess I've made some gills, sure. Sure, sure. And has it been easy? Is life easy? Have you not gone into cardiac arrest? Are you not about to have an anxiety attack or shoot yourself in the mouth? But you still hustle 24-7, ride or die. Now, ask yourself, are you rich? No, I'm actually not. That's right. You work harder than anyone. You almost rode yourself to the grave and you're still practically a hobo. Why is that? Can't blame Gart. That's a temporary... The system is broken, uh, maybe. There's a mark... Uh, mm, 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 no! That's bad. <sighs> Taxes? I don't know. Why am I so poor? Because of the taxes! G-Man's got his jam-covered sticky fingers in your pocket, stealing from you every time you buy, sell, walk, talk, fought, so much as sneeze. Every time I sneeze? Every time you wipe your ass! They got their direct and their indirect modes of taxation. Sales tax, excise duty, extraction tax, alimony. One tax that don't even have a name. Plus, there's the stuff people in other countries pay for that makes them ask for more money from you here. Total tax duties add up to 98% of all your money! Uh, are, are you sure? That seems like a pretty big number. What are you not sure about? They're milking your nipples till they bleed. Can't you see? Aren't you sick and tired of having bloody nipples? Uh, b uh, I'm, mm, bleeding nipples are kind of a pain, but how will deregulation help with that? It's all about the tax issue, Hustler. No other problem in the world is as pressing as top marginal tax rates. And don't you fucking forget it. All right, that was a weird extended note to end the episode on. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll see you in the next one, folks. Thanks for coming along.